What is up my friends? Welcome to another video. In this video, I'm actually gonna talk about something that came to me today. It's weird, when I work out, I get inspiration, I get things kind of come to me, much like maybe it happens for you, go take a shower, or maybe do some kind of high octane sports or some kind of crazy thing. Ideas start flowing, maybe a walk through the woods, something like that, right? We all have our different ways of doing it. But uh, for me, it's a couple different things come into play is one, I'm back in the United States and it's cold and I'm at high elevation and it's dry. And I just came from Asia, which is low elevation, humid, moist, wet atmosphere and environment. Naturally, my brain is gonna be operating at a whole different capacity in a whole different space because of factors like mold and bacteria being at lower levels, which affect all of us. So anyways, talking about affecting all of us is let's talk about the current state of the market. And let's talk about by far, I think one of the most dangerous things with most people. This is a warning essentially to not only people in the empire community, but people that are watching this YouTube channel that aren't in that discord yet, avid you know, watchers of this channel, take stock of what's just happened over this last year and a half. I've been in crypto um, now for a year and a half and now I, I would say I'm not just in crypto, I'm more in macro markets and I'm more interested to see what's happening globally and how that's affecting different micro markets, okay? Let's just take that last year and a half. What have we experienced? We've experienced an insane bull run on Bitcoin and almost every cryptocurrency, every shit coin, every possible crypto project saw 100X, 1000X, some even more through 2017. I don't think we'll see it like that again. If we do, I think we got one more time that we're going to see it like that before the institutions fully grasp and take a hold of that thing and just squeeze the life out of it and squeeze the volatility out of it like they do with everything. And they're going to do that through accumulating physical Bitcoin because there's only 21 million circulating supply and they've gotten their hands on quite a bit of it. And I'll talk about that in just a minute. This shift that we've seen in 2018 that I, I don't hear anyone talking about. Okay. So we got to see the cryptocurrency really take off. And I think by far, not the biggest bull run we'll see in terms of what happened to Bitcoin, but in terms of what happened to crypto, I think it's the biggest bull run we've seen because regulation is here now. So I don't think every coin and every single project is gonna pump the same if tomorrow all of a sudden Bitcoin went to $100,000. I don't think that no name coins will also go up 10X, 1000X and go parabolic as well. I don't think that because there's now regulation there's now three letter agencies that got their hand and their, gra uh, their grip in this space. I don't see it happening the same way. So in terms of the cryptocurrency market itself, I think that's the biggest bull run we'll see uh, that affects all the market. I don't think we've seen the biggest bull run yet for Bitcoin and a handful of other coins and they'll all run together and it'll probably just be your top five, top 10 coin market cap coins really that you see do that. Okay. And those are the, the projects that are pretty well nestled in to the ecosystem and the space and they're not going anywhere. So we got to see that. Most people, most retail money, they were finding out about Bitcoin and really just trying to talk about it for the first time around Thanksgiving with their family. And that's already when it was starting. And then Christmas, it's already in full effect. And that's when you had a ton of people buy the top. And then by January, they were all selling. And really, they were all selling just in this last 30, 60 days as we saw some form of capitulation happening. Uh, some argue that the volume was too low and it wasn't what was going on um, and that there was a bunch of OTC happening with institutions. I, I agree with that aspect of it, but I don't know to what degree capitulation was happening because volume is insanely inaccurate on most exchanges. They got to see that. They passed it up or they got in at the top and lost. They missed out on the pot stock little pump that we had earlier this year when Canada approved it. We had the S&P action, S&P 500 action now three times, I think, three times, yeah. We've dropped now five 500 points in a single day, shorting that, longing different positions on FANG stocks would have done really, really well through this last year and a half. Um, we got to see Tesla get shorted and get uh, the life sucked out of it and then back up, longing, shorting positions there. Most of the retail money has missed out on that. And so now here we are, end of 2018, meeting around with your family again. Retail money's acting the same way, sitting on the sidelines. Gosh, do I buy Bitcoin now? It's, you know, 3,900 as of this morning. Uh, do I do it now? Do I pull the trigger? And they'll probably not because everyone else isn't doing it yet. And it really just, let's take a side note here as to like the power in groupthink. The power in that following the herd mentality. Everyone hates to admit it and everyone doesn't like to talk about it because, you know, usually people are calling them sheep and it's derogatory, I think, for the most part. But there is something to be said about groupthink and it is very, very real. I guarantee you that everyone in their holiday conversations this year 
of Christmas, it's coming up in just a couple days, they'll be talking about how much of an idiot that guy is, or me. How's that crypto doing for you? They're gonna be making fun of you, guarantee it. A lot of the retail money. And they'll once again miss the next one. Because right now has been the time to accumulate all the way down to 36, 34, right? Crazy. And if you haven't been watching the market, then you have no clue what, what relevance 3,900 has, what relevance 3,600 has. You have no clue, really, which is another important factor to keep your pulse on the market. That's part of what I wanted with this community is to really help you keep a pulse on the macro of what's going on in the world. And that affects the micro markets in your country, 100%. So anyway, they missed out on that and they'll do, they'll continue to make the same mistakes going into 2019. But here's a big difference and this is the key that I wanted to give you guys and I haven't heard anyone else talking about this. Did you notice through 2017 that the market moved tremendously? I'm talking about the crypto market with crypto Twitter and news. And here we are at the tail end of 2018 And I don't see it happening like that anymore. I don't see the power of all these crypto Twitter authorities with hundreds of thousands of followers moving the price action like I did in 2017. Even early 2018, I still saw it. Through the middle of 2018, I think that there wasn't a whole lot going on. So a lot of people had just kind of left, taken a break, walked away. But now in this last couple of days, when we saw Bitcoin go to 4,000 and half of crypto Twitter was all of a sudden bullish, it did nothing. It did almost nothing to the price action. I used to be able to almost track it by the tweet, the influx of price action that that would have on the market. So what I think is happening is institutions have come in. And so why this is so significant is because 2017 will by far go down as the year where the easiest, dumbest money was made in crypto with the least regulation and the average Joe could come in and absolutely crush it. Do you still have uh, opportunities in 2019? Of course you do. Keep in mind, there's going to be more regulation, more institutional players, more manipulation. So if you're not willing to have your your hand on that and have a full grasp of what's going on, then I say don't even bother getting in. Or do something with some sort of broker. You know, Fidelity's coming out with some services. You got some uh, decent hedge funds rolling around. Uh, if you got big enough uh, money to, to pop into one of those or get some sort of option to where you don't have to figure all this out for yourself because you're gonna lose and you're gonna lose big and you're gonna be part of the 85, 90% of people who loses in the market every single day. And I don't mean that to be rude, I really don't. It's just the truth. All this institutional accumulation, they are now nestled in in whale positions. A lot of these institutions are and a lot of people are because a lot of people with big money have been watching and when it dipped down into the 34, 3600 range, they bought that shit up like it was like it was Skittles. We have proof of that. 160 wallets all depositing 8,000 Bitcoin. What is that? Over 400, 500 million dollars. All of that's trackable. All that's been noticed in the crypto space. But just understand that that 2017 money, that stupid, close my eyes, da, 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 pick one, and it always wins or it, it won, that's kind of uh, going to go away. I don't think that's going to be possible in 2019, even if there's a bull run and Bitcoin goes to $100,000, like I said, because a lot of these coin projects have already busted out and gone bankrupt or they're on the brink of bankrupt. They've cut back or they're in some sort of investigation. And I think the SEC is going to continue to do this with literally every single ICO that launched in 2017 that they can do it with. They will. And that low lying fruit is going to literally keep them busy for the next six, eight months. And then who knows what else they're going to start to go after. But I think it's so important to talk about these things because it sucks. It sucks to see so many people that are so hesitant. Maybe they, they're not confident. Maybe they don't have enough of the information, maybe whatever's going on for them, but they got money and they go and they do stupid shit. And one of the dumbest things I think is to wait and sit on the sidelines of this market instead of getting involved. There's going to be some big things happening in 2019. And I'm going to start talking about more of my predictions for 2019, what's going to be happening globally, economically, but man, 2019, 2020, going into the next elections in the United States, oh, there's gonna be so many rock your world things that get dropped that it's gonna make it really hard for people to stay focused, especially stay focused with their money and their risk management. So anyways, I just, I had that all kind of come to me today and I wanted to wrap that up and shoot that in a video for you guys. So I hope this has been valuable for you. Show us some support, smash the like button. Also, if you want to comment on anything that I just said or join in on the conversation, I'd love to hear from you. Just comment below. And if you want to support us from a financial standpoint, there's a couple different ways to do that underneath this video. We're running Teespring campaigns. Some of those Teespring campaigns might be showing up actually directly underneath this video on YouTube, or there's a 
Teespring link uh, at the top of the description. The second way that you can support us, just by literally donating to us and saying, hey, thank you, Jay, for shooting this video. Thank you for doing what you do, researching whatever. Myself and a small team of people that we have that actually make, research, and produce this stuff, there's a Patreon link underneath the video. I really, really appreciate anything and everything. Uh, we literally have donations starting at a dollar. So all of that goes to good use with uh, our future efforts and what we're doing here on this channel. And then if you're brand new to the channel, hit the subscribe button, click the bell notifications so that you get more notifications from YouTube directly and you start to see us on your homepage and be on the lookout because we'll be dropping more videos soon, my friends. If I don't talk to you before Christmas, Merry Christmas. I hope that you are having a safe and very fun holiday with your family. I hope that you're remembering times like this to really spend time with the people that you love and remember that no matter what you got going on in life right now, it's okay. It's not that big of a deal. It will get better if you're in a bad spot. And if you're in a great spot, then focus on that and it will continue to stay great for you and prosperous in 2019. Last thing, we have a live stream coming up. Check it out on the channel. You can set a reminder. It is about goal setting, which I know most people hate that. It's going to be going through my very pragmatic goal setting process. We're going to talk about a very kind of high level about goal setting to begin with. And then we're going to dive into just a pragmatic way that I do it. Always have. And I think it's really, really going to be beneficial for you. All right. That's it, my friends. Bye.